Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Indab Africa. This is Chris coming to you from central Pennsylvania. Today's topic is once again about Zimbabwe, or as some of us call it from time to time, cloud cuckoo land. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a land dispute that recently cropped up in June of 2020 and lingers to this day in early July of 2020. And we're going to discuss some of the myths, the fallacies, the distortions, the lies of Robert Gabriel Mugabe and ZANU-PF when it comes to farm and land in Zimbabwe. So former Olympic swimming gold medalist Kirsty Coventry was recently entangled in a land dispute involving the purported seizure of a property allocated by Zimbabwe's government to Robert Zuao, who was the nephew of the late Robert Gabriel Mugabe. Now, in June of 2020, the High Court Judge Justice uh, Tawanda Titapi ruled that uh, Zuao, who's the nephew of Mugabe, as I mentioned, never had a claim to subdivision four of the Cockington farm that was allocated to youth, sports, arts, and recreation minister, Kirsty Coventry. Now, Coventry has been the Minister of Sports since September 10th of 2018 under Emerson Managagwa's government after he won the disputed and uh, likely fraudulent election. He appointed her as sports minister. Now, Zawal was allocated this farm in 2004, but lost it after it emerged that he had abandoned it and had not occupied the farm since 2011. It turned out that he was actually allocated a subdivision of one of Cockington Farm, um, and she was allocated subdivision four of the same farm, which is a very different area. Now, Coventry's husband, Tyrone Seward, purportedly gave Zuao 30 days to wind up operations on their part of the farm. Now, this is a quite an interesting uh, situation here. Now, Coventry is purportedly an independent, not a member of a political party, but she does serve in the ZANU-PF government under Emerson Managagua. So in response to this situation, the uh, Movement for Democratic Change, the official opposition, their youth assembly demanded the International Olympic Committee terminate Kirsty Coventry's membership in the IOC. Now, this is what they said. We urge the IOC Advisory Committee on Human Rights and IOC Ethics Committee to revoke the status of Ms. Kirsty Coventry as an International Olympic Committee member due to her participation in the continued brutalization and abuse of the Zimbabwean and the wide Zimbabweans and the widespread human rights abuses carried out by the government, which Ms. Coventry is an essential component. Now, to be fair, Kirsty Coventry has no no role whatsoever in any of the abuses that the government of ZANU-PF has been involved in for the past 40 years, uh, and certainly not in her time as sports minister. She's an acclaimed Olympian, and as I'll mention in a moment, a record holder of many sorts. She uh, is not part of that. Nonetheless, that's not what this video is about. It's not about her role in the government. But this is what the opposition did. They called for her ouster from the International Olympic Committee. She's been a member of it since 2013. Now, the five-time Olympian has quite a haul of medals to her credit, including a gold, a silver, and a bronze from the 2004 Olympic Games, and a gold and three silvers from the 2008 Olympic Games. Now, her sports glory gave Zimbabwe a brief little fresh air while she was an Olympic athlete because uh, instead of headlines about ZANU-PF pilfering the nation and driving millions of political refugees out of Zimbabwe, the government could turn and look to Kirsty Coventry uh, well, I suppose it was inconvenient for Barbara Mugabe that she was white, but they could turn to her with pride and say, look at the pride of our nation here. In fact, Mugabe himself called Coventry our golden girl. And after the 2008 Olympics, he famously handed her $100,000 cash bonus for her performance as an Olympian. Quite interesting. With her seven Olympic medals, Coventry is the most decorated African Olympian ever. Together with uh, Christina Ergazigi, she is also the most, she's won the most individual Olympic medals in women's swimming. World record holder for individual medals in Olympic swimming. She competed in all five Olympics from 2000 to 2016, and she has won all but one of Zimbabwe's Olympic medals. So Zimbabwe has eight Olympic medals, seven of which belong to Kirsty Coventry. Quite an impressive resume, quite an impressive swimmer. I've watched her many times in the Olympics and also international competitions. Now, after coming to power, Mugabe has vowed to improve the uh, agricultural sector, and part of his plan was to downsize big farms and reallocate land. How exactly that improves the farming sector leaves one scratching their head. And in fact, we've seen this now in a video I've just produced talking about land being taken away from a poultry farmer and a blueberry farmer because their farms are too large in Mashona Land West. Too large, according to the government. Of course, the government has proven that it knows nothing about the market or economics, uh, yet it's making the decisions and taking land that lawfully belongs to someone that they legally purchased. But the story here is not Kirsty Coventry. It's about this question of land and land allocation. The fact that Mugabe's nephew was allocated land in 2004, allocated, what does that mean? 
Who's the government to allocate land? People should be able to freely choose what land they buy and sell to others, not the government. And who is ZANU-PF to allocate this land for any reason or determine what too large a farm is? As I've repeatedly stated, this totalitarian smoke and mirror campaign against a fictional white nationalist in the immediate aftermath of independence in Zimbabwe, then against Joshua Nkomo and Zapu, and then you wind up with a formed merged ZANU-PF, and then industry, attacking industry and trying to nationalize industry, and finally, eventually going after the lifeblood of Zimbabwe's economy, the commercial farming sector. ZANU-PF will demonize anyone whom it perceives to be a threat to its self-enrichment scheme disguised as governance in cloud cuckoo land. And that's really what's going on here. The government is taking land from people and giving to people so that it benefits ZANU-PF, not Zimbabwe or the people of Zimbabwe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a disturbing development. It's not new. It's not going to end. So long as ZANU-PF is in power in Zimbabwe, the people of Zimbabwe will continue to suffer the depredations of this totalitarian and the self-enrichment scheme known as a political party. What a tarnishing stain they leave on the liberation struggle for those who fought for independence and equality and freedom in Zimbabwe, yet have not received it under ZANU-PF capricious rule. If you've enjoyed this video or found it at least thought-provoking, I ask that you subscribe to my channel by smashing that subscription button right down there. Also, be sure to toggle that bell icon so you get notified of updates. Only about 30% of people take the time to do that. If you don't do that, then you don't find out when the next video is published. And uh, feel free to leave comments. I try to read all comments. And finally, I ask that you smash that like button because likes drive viewership. The more likes you get as a percentage of a video, the more likely it is that YouTube will put an impression on someone's YouTube channel if they're interested in a similar topic. So I thank you very much and have a pleasant day, ladies and gentlemen.